Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, November 21st, 2016. Uh, there's been some chatter in the trading room today, and um, you know, as of recently about seasonality, there's always a, a point in time, there's a lot of statistics you can get online uh, that talk about market seasonality. In other words, at certain times of the year, whether it's uh, you know the, 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 the January effect, uh, Santa Claus rally, we're now into the, you know, the big Thanksgiving week uh, for most of you that know, even if you don't trade in the U.S., it, uh, you know, we have the abbreviated uh, holiday trading week with the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday, uh, so trading volumes drop off, and usually what happens in the U.S. tends to happen elsewhere, so that's where it might affect uh, you guys outside the U.S., but uh, let's take a look at these, these, these numbers. Now, uh, why I'm doing this with a chart, when you look at seasonality numbers online, you get the statistics that are just going to simply show you, you know, historically, uh, the week of Thanksgiving, for example, if we're looking at those seasonality numbers, um, the market does X, and it's bullish X number of times. I like to use a chart because it tells you a little bit uh, uh, a different story, or at least it gives you additional details. Um, what I mean by that, for example, if we had a huge meltdown leading into that period, uh, and I should have uh, should have clarified it first. What you're looking at here, guys, by the way, is a chart. It's the NASDAQ 100, as you can see up here. And you see the little number 52 right here? All these are simply, I used a weekly chart, and I set cycle lines at 52-week periods. So each line comes in right around the, the week of Thanksgiving here. Uh, it's 52 years, uh, 52 weeks back, so one year. Uh, so these are the same point in time in the market every year going back to uh, November of 2000. And you can see it's a mixed bag. What I did is I put the red arrows, red arrows show where it was clearly... Uh, a great time to go short or to get out of stocks if you were in stocks because the market dropped right away. This wasn't a huge drop, but from the peak right here, if you really zoom in there, you can see as I'm hitting with this little crosshair, that's the top. And there was a pullback. Uh, we'd have to measure that. Let's see if I can do that for you. Um, now nah, I'd have to enter annotation mode. That's a problem with stock charts here. Let's just keep it here. It's simple. I can tell you that's a correction. Probably good. 3% or more, a decent pullback in the market, but then it rallied from there. So these arrows that I have are somewhat subjective. I will say that subjective because whether it was a good time to go long or short all depends on your time frame. If you're looking out, uh, you know, for just a next week or two, which in the wrong market conditions can cause a lot of pain. In other words, usually a week or two isn't that much. You don't see that big a gain or loss in the market, but there are times where the market has very strong advances. Take the you know, small caps recently. You know, a week or two on the wrong side of that rally can and will cause a lot of pain, whereas normally the markets aren't going to move much more than a few percentage points in a week or two. So again, that's why I'm trying to impress the point. These are somewhat subjective, but where I put the red arrows shows an, a clear and immediate uh, drop in the market. Uh, might not be very much, so again, take that for what it's worth. If you were long and you were willing to ride out that little pullback, then that would be a green arrow for you. The blue arrows were the ones that were a bit subjective and not very clear. In other words, this one here we had a, and I also want to say that I like to filter out when you have a very strong advance. Typically, you do get a correction, but you didn't get it in this case. This is more of a continuation move, but you can see a little rally and then a pop right here. After a couple few weeks, maybe a couple months, we went back down to below where we started that month. Um, so overall, that one's either questionable, depending on your time frame, or maybe you call that a green arrow. And if it were a green arrow, uh, here's something I noted here. The green arrows are, are uh, the ones that are these three green arrows are points where at this this you know time of the year there was a very clear and powerful rally it was in other words it was a great time to get long now a couple things I see after that uh, from the, these points this this cluster of green arrows and I maybe could have made this one green arrow as well number one these it just so happens you look at the bull market which started this bull market has already been actually for over a year now this has been the second longest bull market in history um, so you know I'm of the mindset that uh, this bull market is in the final stages uh, this is sloppy you know topping action uh, it's markets really gone nowhere for about two years now it's grinded around sideways uh, there are those out there that think this is a consolidation period working off overbought conditions and the market's ready to thrust up and, and go on to new highs in which case I'm assuming that they, they're expecting this to then morph into the longest bull market in history maybe maybe not time will tell but let's just assume for a minute now that this market is in its latter stages 
Um, if so, then you have this cluster of these three distinct, what I put in the green arrows, because were, there were distinct rallies from that period. You can see the crosshairs. There is a rally. Even though it stalled out and there was about a year of sideways trading action, the markets finished about right where they started that year, a year earlier. Um, either way, you can see a rally that went on for a few months, so that was clearly green or bullish territory for this seasonality, you know, get long and stay long. Here's another very clear, there was a little blip in the end following this week, but then a very powerful, one of the strongest, you know, advances, just a unidirectional advance. You don't even see any red, red candles in there. It's all black, uh, meaning up, 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 up. And then again, right there. Now this one came after a correction. Uh, this one came after a pretty big correction here as well. And that tends to, these corrections leading up to those advances tend to provide the fuel because the market is already over, uh, oversold in some cases, such as here, at least on, on certain time frames. It also has worked off overbought conditions, and that is fuel for rallies, just as when you see uh, strong advances leading up to that. It's very similar to that OPEX uh, ramp and fade that I talked about where the market tries to often rallies up into OPEX uh, for whatever reasons. Uh, maybe that's you know, to roast more of the put buyers. There's maybe more put than call buyers. So those, those, those puts expire worthless. Then the market drops. At least that's been the pattern in uh, recent years. And uh, so you can see that to an extent here when you tend to have a rally up into this point in time this week in in, in history uh, you tend to have a pullback there and uh, there you can see very strong rally leading up to the week of um, you know Thanksgiving very sharp correction last year uh, again the three instances and really the fourth that, that could be a green arrow there came smack in the middle of the bull market that's when the bull is at the strongest you the, the strongest thrust you do have that initial thrust off the lows it was very strong uh, but typically, just like an Elliott wave, you have a three-wave count on a primary cycle. Uh, wave three up is, or th three down in a bullish trend is typically the most powerful wave. And this is, that's in the middle of a, a trend. And this was in the middle of the bull market, so you'd expect these arrows. Now, as you see here, just as you did back when the market was topping in 2007, uh, you can see uh, you didn't want to get long the week of Thanksgiving because there was a huge drop after that. Um, back in that's uh, the 2007 October or November uh, Thanksgiving week, November of 2007. So this this line right here just past there, you can see this is where 2008 begins. So uh, there was an example where you didn't want to uh, you wanted to be short. Uh, here I put a, a blue arrow because it's sort of indeterminable. Yes, there was a little drop, then a little rise, uh, but after that, if you really were a swing trader, we went well below where we were the week of Thanksgiving. We only went a little bit higher. And then had you swing traded, that would be, so if I had to put a question mark there or pick one or the other, I should say the blue is a question mark because it could be interpreted either way. But that would have to be a red arrow for a swing trader because we definitely dropped down um, much more below where we closed than the little rise above afterwards. This one, again, questionable. There was an initial blurp down, a little pop up. Uh, but mostly sideways action. That's why I left that blue. Here's a clearly, uh, back in 2004, clearly bearish. Um, you wanted to get short the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, the market never looked back, uh, fell. And again, notice how there was a strong rally leading up to it. So those are things I look at. Here's a strong rally leading up, and that rally continued on past, looks like probably into year end, and then January is when the market melted down. So, um, that probably should have been a red arrow because you can see a rally leading up to it and then a big drop down. But uh, again, this was around the bottom of a of a end of a bear market there. Here was a, a bear market fully in effect. There was a bear market rally leading up to the week of Thanksgiving. You can see the market peaked right there. And that was a golden opportunity to get short on that bear market rally for the final leg down of that bear into two, the 2002 lows. And uh, so... Again, uh, the, my takeaway from this is right now we've had a pretty strong advance. We've had this leg up, a little pullback, and another advance into this point. Um, so based on where we are in the market cycle of things, as well as the fact that we didn't have a correction, had we had a very sharp correction leading up to this week here, I might favor a uh, an advance off here because the market would be now near-term oversold, but that's not the case. The market is near-term. It's overbought on many metrics right now, and uh, that, that, that leads me to believe we might see something like this again, another uh, another negative 
period of returns right now following this week. But uh, again, take it for what it's worth. And you can do this on your own charts. Like I said, on stock charts, it's pretty easy because you have these uh, cycle lines and you just go to a weekly chart, uh, drag them to be 52 weeks apart, and you can put it anywhere you want. You can do that on January 1st. You can do it uh, you know, any, any week or time period in the market. And um, again, I like to just marry this, if you will, or combine these um, you know, this visual with those stats that you pull online that give you the historic, you know, returns for the market during a certain period. Again, what was the story? Because that doesn't give you the full story. What was the market doing leading up to that point in time? And what has it done at other point in times where it had strong rallies leading into that week um, or a strong drop leading into that week? Uh, so hopefully this helps, and I, it was a lot easier to put this in video form to try to express my thoughts and to put this up in a static chart. But uh, I'll keep this video relatively brief here, under 11 minutes. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.